All right, how's it going? This is Sam with thinkparticle.com, and in this video, we're going to be talking about how to create uh, some really cool strands in Houdini. Uh, this is my second Houdini tutorial, and uh, ideally, there's going to be a lot more to follow. Um, but before we get started, I do want to do a, a quick shout out um, to my website. Uh, this uh, website is uh, what supports all of my training. Um, if you are a Cinema 4D user, I've got a lot of uh, products on here that are used by a l wide range of uh, users around the world, um, anywhere from uh, you know a small shop in uh, in Alabama all the way up to uh, Nintendo and uh, Pepsi um, are users of my products, and uh, we've got some really great stuff here, and it uh, allows me to keep making stuff like this. So, anyways, um, we've got some Houdini tutorials uh, starting out, and we've been making Cinema 4D tutorials for a while, so. Uh, check that out if you want to learn more and see how I make the, the work I do. Uh, also, I uh, just want to say, uh, initially, if you're interested in this video and you don't have Houdini yet, that's okay. Uh, you don't need to own a copy of Houdini uh, professionally. Uh, there happens to be a free, uh, free version called the Apprentice version. Um, this is also the indie version, which is what I am using currently. Uh, it has a few uh, limited restrictions commercially, but you can use it commercially. It's very powerful, and the Houdini engine is now free. And uh, the biggest part is uh, that you'll actually start uh, using, um, having the ability to use uh, Octane Render, Arnold Render Man, uh, coming very soon. So uh, that's a big deal and very exciting. Uh, it's going to have a lot of flexibility. And... Uh, I've used personally Octane, Arnold, and a little bit of RenderMan, and they are solid, very, very quick. Um, not, to, not to say that Mantra isn't uh, really useful as well, but uh, if you've got a really solid GPU, Octane is uh, quite, uh, quite the tool, and Arnold, you know, it's the industry standard, uh, along with RenderMan. So, uh, anyways, without further ado, let's go ahead and just jump in and get started. So, there was my long-winded uh, introduction. So. Anyways, uh, we're going to make some strands. So the first thing we're going to do is kind of look through this scene file that I've got here. Um, I've just got a grid inside of this particle emitter object, and I've got a few different types of um, emission uh, coming out of that. So the first one is this uh, just random strands coming out of it. And I'll show you how to make those. Um, and then I have a little bit more orderly strand. This is a little bit more uh, motion graphics-ish, and uh, which is kind of my my area that I've I come from um, and it's pretty cool and the last one is uh, not from this emitter but from another emitter and uh, it's this really sweet particle tornado sort of look but um, this kind of bases off of my last tutorial which goes into a lot more detail about how to create these cool vortex um, cool vortexes that follow a um, Oh goodness! Cool vortexes that follow a um, follow a uh, follow a spline. Excuse me. Anyways, let's go ahead and break these down. So uh, let's just go ahead and uh, let's remake it. So oops, that's not the right button. Um, all new. Okay. Uh, save and create new. Okay. And we'll just save this really quick as. Um, We are going to save this under this folder, and we'll just copy this name. Okay, there we go. So the first thing we're going to do is just drop a grid down, and we're just going to leave that as grid. Um, we're going to rename it, actually, uh, to particle emitter. Um, obviously, you can name it whatever you want. Uh, geometry, we're going to just drop that down, and we're going to name this uh, strands. And we're gonna just build one, one uh, inside of one of one. Um, goodness, what's it called? Inside of one node um, instead of three, and we're just gonna go one at a time. So the first thing we're gonna do is just start by creating an object merge node, and uh, this is useful because we can now merge in this grid, and we can use that as our emitter. So we're just gonna select that uh, that overall object up there. It'll take. So basically, this node right here is going to take the uh, last node in the chain um, and uh, reference that as our emitter. So now we have that, and we're going to go ahead and drop down a pop network. And we will click into that. And 
we're going to make sure first that this is emitting. So we are emitting particles, that's good. I'm gonna actually add some pop wind and let's go ahead and drop that in. And we're just gonna set the amplitude to one for now and that'll be a good start. So now these particles move and uh, we have a lot of particles. So I'm actually gonna turn that birth rate down to 50. Um, and the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and create a trail node. And this is where the particles start to uh, get a trail. Um, so if you hit play, you'll notice that there's a very, very subtle uh, two particles for every um, particle. And if we turn that up a bit, you'll notice that they start to follow each other around. And uh, I'm gonna just set this to 300 and change my timeline settings, uh, my frame per second to 300 and turn on the uh, final or the uh, real-time toggle and if we just hit play you'll notice that these particles are now growing out but they're not connected in a uh, strand right now and the way to solve that is to um, to uh, take this trail and set it to connect as polygons and close rows and now these are polygons and uh, basically uh, that's the first step to creating strands and we can go ahead and convert this to uh, whatever we need if we don't want to use polygons we can change these to a NURBS curve or a Bezier curve um, we'll just leave it as polygon for now and uh, we'll go ahead and start it over okay so it's growing out uh, the next thing we're going to do is jump into strands a little deeper go to the pop net and delete the wind and drop a pop vop down. So I'm a big fan of the pop vop network. It's very familiar to me. It reminds me a lot of Expresso and um, different nodes, uh, node systems I've used before. And um, if you've come from Cinema 4D, that's uh, that's their system. Uh, if not, well, then uh, it, that might be useless to you. But anyways, um, it's very helpful. Um, and it's a very linear process, which I like a lot. Um, but it doesn't have to be linear. Anyways, we're going to skip that. Let's go ahead and drop a curl noise node down. And what we're going to do is plug the position in. And then we're going to get a vector to float node. And a float oops, to vector node. Okay. And we're just going to grab these and copy and paste the f uh, vector to float node. And run the velocity into it. So the curl noise is going to plug into the vector to float. Um, and that's going to have the first and third inputs plug into the float to vector and plug that into the velocity. We're going to take the second input from the vector to float and plug that into the, uh, the float to vector second input as well. So basically that's the x and z axis from the curl noise and then the y axis um, from the initial velocity. So we do have velocity um, available. We can use it if we want to, but we don't need to. So I'll show that in a bit. So let's go ahead and also get a mix, a color mix node. And we're gonna just um, drag the noise to the color and then just drop this on it. And then we're going to uh, pick a color. So let's say 0.7 on the bias and get a little bit more blue-ish. And that should be good, okay. So we're gonna drop back up to the pop net. And now these are going to move around and they're moving very, um, it's very interesting. Uh, let's go ahead and um, go up to the strands and just see how this looks initially. So the curl noise is very small, but it's giving us the effect that I wanted. So what's going on is these particles are growing out um, based off of this curl noise on one axis, or excuse me, on two axes. Um, and uh, you get these really cool swirls and strands because of it. So uh, one thing we could do is uh, multiply that quantity by 10. So we have uh, 10 times as many particles and we get these really cool looking, uh, these really cool looking results. And if we go back to the color mix, we can change that to 0.8. And now that curl noise is affecting our particles, but they're a little bit more blue. Um, I like that tinted look gives us a very wide variety of colors, but they have a theme. And uh, these just look really sweet. And if we wanted to actually copy that curl noise, I bet uh, we could just get a point VOP and um, we could just plug these points in 
and use the point VOP based off of this curl noise to actually control the Y position to affect it after it's already been grown out, um, which can create these really cool hills. And uh, you know what? I'm going to try that really quick. So let's... It's probably very unprofessional to go on tangents, but I don't care because this is going to look cool. So we're going to grab the position of the points and then get the vector to... Well, it'll look cool theoretically. You never actually know. So bear with me. And if this bothers you, just skip ahead one minute. And let's get a multiply. Now let's get a range. Maybe a little bit more. Oh, you know what? That was really strong because I forgot to set it properly. So let's go back. Yep, that is not working. So let's set that to one. Oh, you know what? These need to have their equivalent X and Z axes. And it's just a big mess right now. So what I want to do is try and see if this will work better this way. Yeah, so basically what's going on is uh, this is just causing a big mess, so we'll skip it um, in this case. So thanks for bearing with me. Theoretically, it was cool. Um, so this is still a cool effect, um, and I really like what's going on. So um, we're having fun, but we're going to we're gonna make that vortex, that particle vortex now. Um, so let's go ahead and get rid of the emitter and the object merge and drop down a circle and we're going to drop that in hit L and now these particles need to be on the XZ plane and now they'll emit and that's cool that actually explains a lot that it was uh, on the other axis from the last one uh, maybe not to you but it shows me why it was going the way it was anyways uh, we're gonna drop a curve down um, I always remember to set the right axis, and uh, we're going to just type this in manually, and that's going to give us a curve, and uh, we're going to just type in these two points, it's uh, 0, 0, 0, which is the center of the scene, and then 0, 10, 0, which is point, uh, one at the uh, 10 uh, unit mark on the y-axis. Um, we're going to just plug these into a resample mode, and that's going to give us more points. So if we give, if we give it a look, you can see now we have uh, 20 points because we're going to set the length to 0.5, and that's all we're going to do there. And then we're going to get a vortex force attributes node. And if you watch my other tutorial, you can see how to do some pretty cool things with this. Uh, we're going to set the velocity to 30 and the lift to 10, and we're going to set this to go into a null, and that null is going to uh, be called um, out vortex curve, and we'll go into the pop net and set a vortex force, and we'll turn off the points, okay, and get a SOP geometry node, and that's going to plug into the vortex force, hit L and we will reference our curve and uh, there we go so um, now we can just hit play and these will move up go up a bit and make sure that we are set to follow the strands and render the strands um, not the vortex curve and now our curves are following the vortex in a really cool manner so um, if we turn this up a bit more the velocity will now spin stronger and um, it looks really sweet. And once you get to the top of the curve, uh, they just kind of stay there. Um, but the solution to that would be to extend the curve. 
and if they for some reason decide to travel too fast, you can uh, set the lift to a lower velocity. So if I wanted to, I could set the lift to five and they'll just keep going up and basically they're gonna be following the velocity of uh, the rotation and the lift and the particles are also going to be um, uh, following the, uh, oh, what's it called? Um, the curl noise that we have set, which is, uh, needless to say, very cool. So I'm gonna just set this one more time and because I just changed the settings, it's just gonna re-simulate them. But I'll go back to the beginning and watch it play anyways. Yeah, I love that. That looks super cool. Uh, my only thought is that this curl noise is a little small, so we're just gonna actually bring the frequency down, and I think that solves the problem. Yeah, it does. And that's cool. So if we turn the source count down to, say, 25, for the strands. Now these particles will grow out and follow along this curve and really demonstrate what's going on here. And the trail is set to 300, but if we set this to 100, now the particles, or say 50, now the particles will follow these strands and after 50 frames they just uh, stop following that uh, position. In fact, we could turn that down even more. So now these are little, uh, little strands and it's a fun effect. Um, I think it looks really cool. It's really neat. Um, you can do a lot with this, and you can turn this into geometry. You can sweep curves across it, um, and yeah, that's uh, that's that. So uh, basically, that's my second uh, Houdini tutorial. Um, it took about 17 minutes. And again, uh, thank you for watching, and make sure to check out uh, thinkparticle.com for more. And uh, keep an eye out for all of those uh, Think Particle tutorials. And uh, if you have any requests for tutorials, let me know. I'm Sam Wilker with thinkparticle.com, and I will catch you guys later. Thanks. Bye.